Howdy folks, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today, we got what we call fun happening. We are going to skim coat all these block walls. The guy here, it took him five years to build this. That's what he told me. Now what he's got is, he's got CMU blocks, concrete blocks, cinder blocks. Uh, cinder blocks is not as strong as concrete blocks, but anyway, you can see the block. You can see all the, the outline of the block. When you wet blocks, it shows unless you go about at least a half inch thick. So that means when it rains, you're going to see the block lines. What does that matter today? That gives us what we're doing. We're going to skim this. And he already had a fellow skim it, but it didn't turn out so, so pretty. So what we're going to do is... We're going to put another skim coat on this, but this time we're going to go a little thicker so that when it rains, it won't show. And by the way, guys, if you're going to paint your wall, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they're block lines because the paint will remove all that. What we're going to talk about today is hydration. Um, when you wet the walls, you hydrate the walls. So you don't need a, you don't need a bonding agent. You don't need wire. I'll get into that later why that's actually not a good idea to put a bonding agent over clean concrete. If you look at this uh, block wall too, you'll see lines in it. Because what I did, what I did uh, the other day was I pressure washed it. And I had to account for a lot of things like the mud. Uh, I pressure wash it with 3,500 PSI. That's a gas-powered uh, pressure washer and then I use the turbo tip so I give it extra strength and put figure eights on it so now that we got all the dust dirt grime off it and even micro etched it because this was done about six months ago and what happens you mow the lawn you mow the lawn the dirt goes up gets all over the wall so we had to remove all that stuff so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about hydration the importance of it a bonding agent do you need it on a painted surface yes do you need it on here? No, you don't. In fact, it would be counterproductive. So no wire, no, no stucco netting or mesh or bonding agent because that would be counterproductive. I'll go into that a little later. Anyway, what we're doing is, uh, let's walk this way, Jay. We'll show you guys what we're doing. Uh, we're, pu we're putting a, a, a good solid half inch on here. And what we've done is we've, we've already done all this stuff here. And as you come around, you can see the thickness. Kirk's the best. Okay, I'm going to show you something else too, guys. Um, if you could kind of look down right here, you could see these uh, radiuses. Um, I'll explain something here too, guys. Now, now, granted, the fellow here, he says, Kirk, I'm not interested in you making these walls a perfect radius. And I said, well, man, if we're already here, we'll do the best we can. And I'll try to radius this out a little bit. So what I've done is when you got a wall from here to here and it's blocked, they don't give the curve. So what I've done here is I put about an inch and a half already. Now I'm just letting that set, an inch and a half there, letting it set. All right, guys. Now that I'm warmed up, I'll quit rambling and show one thing at a time what we're doing is applying coat after coat right here to get this radius a better than it is the guy said he's not concerned with it but I say come on now what well, we that's our job let us fix it a, a little bit so we're, we're adding it adding it this right here I've skimmed twice and what we're doing now is we're waiting for the Sun to pretty much dry this up so it could absorb a little bit more now for example this already got a couple coats because it's flat from here to here so I built it up and as I build up I let the Sun come down suck the moisture out the wall is sucking the moisture out too and we're using a, a cement that is what they used way back uh, thousands of years ago it's uh, plastic and lime. I'll go over that and show you exactly what I'm referring to because the people who call me and say, Kirk, you know, I, I couldn't get it to stick. 
every trifle fell off. Well, two things, you're using the wrong cement. Hello. Oh, we're going to make it real pretty for you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, what I'm doing, this is my third coat here. And all I want to do is, is kind of get the radius uh, better looking than it is. Um, because that's part of our job. We want it to be prettier. We want it to, to look like a radius. But anyhow, getting back to... Um, the cements. I'm going to show you what cement we're using and why. Because that's pretty important, guys. Uh, we are using plastic and lime together. Now, why am I using plastic and lime together? Because like they did 1,000, 10,000 years ago when they built the pyramids, like they did the gladiator stadiums, stadiums, the churches way back in old. They didn't have Portland cement. Portland cement was developed in uh, <laughs> it was developed in the UK in well, 1960 and it came to or 1860 and it came to America. So before they had Portland which dries immediately they were using lime plaster. Before I forget guys I'm just going to show you what the heck lime plaster is. All right. Uh, excuse me, Lou. It's plastic. Doesn't matter the name. It can be any kind of plastic. Plastic means lime. And not only that, we're putting in, we're putting in lime. So if you have 100-pound sacks of plastic and you have the 50-pound bags of lime, you put two to one. And that makes it so it's spreadable. We can spread it easy and it won't absorb. So you guys call it and say, hey, every trowel I put on is falling off. The wall's not hydrated enough. Or the material's wrong. Jake. Okay, moving on. Let me get some more mud here. All right. Work right with you, brother. So again, I, the build-out just... just takes a little bit more. And you notice I'm not pulling it up like this. I'm, I'm taking it off, putting it at a slant, turning it, and putting it on like that. See that? Turn it. That way I'm putting it on the, the trial vertical. So when I go vertical, I gotta put a little twist to it. Anyway guys, that's how you do a build up on a radius. Uh, I wanna explain a few more things as we're going along. And that is the mechanical bond that I said I'd talk about. A mechanical bond in plaster's terms is the strongest, most effective way to adhere plaster because what it does is it welds the stucco to the blocks, bricks, anything porous, concrete walls. The stucco will weld basically to it by what we term a mechanical bond. Now, if I put a bonding agent on here, is that as strong as a natural mechanical bond? No. But a bonding agent, it has a different purpose. It's for a painted surface. If I were to attach wire here, stucco netting, 20 gauge wire, which is for tile, or 18 or 17, which we use for houses, would that be good for here? No. That would actually compromise the ability for this stucco to adhere naturally with a mechanical bond. So the mechanical bond we're doing right now is the strongest. It's the absolute strongest you can get. Much stronger than putting wire or say any kind of uh, a bonding agent. Those are for painted surfaces. And again, in order to get a good mechanical bond, you have to have a perfectly clean wall. And I'm not talking about a wall that's got moss, dirt, dust. I'm talking about perfectly clean, spotless, that's why I, when I pressure wash this, I, I use so much PSI strength to remove it, etch it, get it so where this stucco adheres. It's got to adhere well. And I'm almost done with getting these radiuses uh, where they're prettier. And I'll go over a few other things. All right, guys. Um, 
we're at a stage now where we have two to three to four inches drying here and there. This wall, the whole job is between three eighths and three inches. That's the difference. So I'm looking at this and I'm allowing all that stuff to dry. So what we are here to do today is make the walls pretty and give it a sand finish. We call it a float finish because we use these sponge floats to bring out this, the sand, the aggregate. So here's what we do now. Now I'm going to hit this top and let's see, oh you can't see this. Well anyhow this is bringing out the sand. Got to bring that aggregate out. And I can look at the wall and if I don't see any more shine that means it's drying. If I see it's white like the concrete that means I've lost it. And you can't bring it back to life and stucco waits for no man. So what we're doing, guys, is we've, we've got it as true and plumb as I want it. We don't want to get too carried away and make a perfect uh, finish. Um, so what I'm doing now is this is called floating it. That means we want to bring out the sand and make it kind of pretty. So we've already discussed the type of finish he wants, the owner wants, and he is the one who dictates what we do, not us. Uh, so he says, give me a sand finish. We're going to give him a sand finish. And again, he's painting this. So is it super important that we get all the grout lines out? <laughs> well, for us, we do this for a living. So yeah, it is. We like to put on as much as necessary so that when it rains, you don't see grout lines. Uh, is this going to strengthen this wall? No. It doesn't matter what cement I use. And there's, there's Rapid Set, which is a hydraulic cement, incredibly strong. But what we want is for something that we could put on and relax a bit. Uh, I don't want to stress out thinking, man, I hope I don't lose these walls all over the place. So that's why we're using plastic and that's why we're adding lime to it. And if you guys think, what is lime? Limestone. You take the limestone from a quarry and you heat it up. And then you can make a slack lime, lime putty, powdered lime. And what happens when you add water to that lime? It's exactly what's happening here. It's turning back into limestone. So limestones are pretty strong, guys. But on this wall here, we're not concerned with strength. Why? Because this wall is pretty strong. It's, it's solid uh, CMU blocks. It's poured. They don't need any more strength. What they need is a pretty wall. That's what he's hired us for. Because a couple fellas tried it and didn't do so well. But um, that's not us. We're, he said, Kirk, I watched your video. <laughs> I see a lot of walls you guys did. You do mine like that. I said, absolutely. So... Let me get back over here and show you how to get these corners too. There's a lot of stuff going on here, guys. What I do is I like to use a lot of water on corners. So I dip this sponge in the water. Dip the sponge in the water. On something like this, I have a lot of things going through my head, such as the concrete, such as we're working in a busy area. There are a lot of people here. A lot of people are walking these streets. Um, I don't want to get yelled at by folks for any reasons like disturbing their, their entrance. So I'm always looking around making sure that there's nobody walking. The dogs are coming by because we got to stop for that. Plus, uh, we are still kind of in COVID a little bit. They're saying you don't have to wear masks here and there. Or actually, they're saying you can eat in a restaurant. The restaurants are all open, but at the same time, wear your mask. <laughs> it's kind of important. That's the kind of stuff that's in the back of my head while I'm doing this. I'm thinking of that because, you know, again, we don't want to piss people off and uh, stuff like that. In fact, I was at Westside yesterday loading up. And as I was loading up, I walked into Westside and they say maximum two people. <laughs> this is just talking because I can do this stuff all day long. Anyway, a guy says, hey, 
there's only supposed to be two of you in here. And I'm looking at this guy, I'm thinking, this guy's huge. He's like loose size, 6'4", 300 pounds. And at first I felt scared, and then I thought, then I got angry. I, I said, look, man, I've been inhaling so much stucco for 40 years. I got more stucco in my lungs. I got a cement wall in my lungs. I ain't worried about COVID. Plus, I'm wearing a mask. <laughs> so that's the kind of fear we got going on, and I'm okay with that. So that's another thing that I'm trying to show you guys what we're doing and why and explain it all. But I'm mindful of other folks, too, because, uh, again, we don't want to get yelled at for doing our job, and we don't want to scare folks. Anyway, this is where we're going with the texture. Um, as we get towards, uh, or halfway through, I mean, we're, we're just warming up right now. We'll explain a few more details that might interest you guys who are doing block walls, cement walls, brick walls, and houses. Oh, before I forget to, if you're doing a, a stucco house, a stucco house is wood. It's got two by, two by fours or two by sixes. Then it has shear wall. The shear wall or the uh, substrate is plywood. Now, if you got plywood, we put paper and wire over that. Now we use a strong cement. Why? Because that house is settling, moving, and it's wood. Wood expands and sh contrasts. So that's a big difference of the cement I'm using here to say if I was doing over a wood house. So little things like that make a big difference. It takes uh, quite a few years to look at, at work, tell the materials, and use them. Kind of like, I'll leave you guys with this for right now. How long would it take somebody to apply stucco? Maybe about two to three years, sometimes ten. How long will it take you to have a vast knowledge of all the materials, what they can do, what, they're not, what they can't do, which ones to use, the hydration of a wall, what to do? I mean, sometimes I've been to a job hydrating it the night before. That takes about ten years of hands-on. And only when you make mistakes do you really learn, guys. I don't want to make any more mistakes. I've made my mistakes years and years ago and and that kind of stuff I remember because I have to come back and redo it at my own cost. I'll show you some more stuff. Um, low bucket, a lot of water. What we did is took lunch. Now you could use a lot of water on here because it only reinforces these corners. It strengthens the corner. Uh, do you need strength here? No. It's not like kids are going to be walking up here. Okay you take the water and just you put it on, and it does you use a lot of water, guys. Look, you can put it, let it drip. I shake it out sometimes to get the mud off. You take it and just use a lot of water. That water running off here, now you get your corners. This reinforces the corners for strength. Um, again, do these, do we really need sh super strength? No, but I have to float these corners. I have to take this. Uh, the sponge float right here and bring the sand out. So that's, that water is necessary. I have to bring this stucco back to life. And you can bring the stucco back to life if you have a lot of lime in there. I'll tell you another thing too, while I just now seen this Darby. We've been applying, and what Jake will do is, Jake will take this Darby. You see those lines, those are Darby lines. And you go sideways, up and down. And this. This way you get a good radius. Jake is about one of the best I've ever seen with this thing. Except for me. Now Jake's better than I am. He's younger and stronger. Anyway, um, after you get that, you reinforce these corners. And of course, we're bringing the sand out. It's a sand finish. Don't be afraid to hit it. Like, okay, I, I'm using this sponge flow. And you can tell when it's... Uh, set. A lot of times people will say, well, I don't think it's ready. There's one way to find out. Hit it. Hit it with the float. Bring that sand out. And when you do use a Darby, that'll, that'll create a pretty even wall. So I'm just looking at details now. And when you see it starting to turn white, that's a pretty good indication. Uh, you better start hitting that with a float. Because again, stucco doesn't wait for us. It, it, if it turns white, uh, you lost it. That means a lot of hard work to try to re-skim it 
or bring it back to life. And it's really hard to bring it back to life once it turns a shade wider. So what you see me doing here is I put the bucket in, the float in, hit it, get the mud off, flip it, put it back in and get the mud off both sides. That way it will float. It, it'll float a lot nicer. It'll bring the sand out even. What happens if I keep going? I'll show you. Okay, I'll keep it going without dipping it in the water. Pretty soon it's going to start to drag. And when it starts to drag, it's not pretty. You see, it's starting to drag. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm pretty used to doing this, but uh, when it starts to drag, it, the mud accumulates in here and it makes a really horrible finish. So that's why I dip this in here all the time. And after you've done it a few million times, you can just close your eyes, tap it a couple times, close your eyes, tap it a couple times, hit it hard. And what happens if you do this? You could bend this the wrong way, unless you're gentle when you do that. Tap, 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 that gets the, the other off. And now what I just destroyed, to prove a point, I'm going to make pretty again. Now I've got to use uh, not a heavy hand, but... Uh, well, finesse, skill, finesse, and that will that'll bring that sand out. And what we try to do is keep it uniform. We don't want to we don't want a whole bunch of float lines like this in it. What we want to do is kind of make it look like a dash, where all those lines are not there, and it takes gentle motion. Just, I mean, I'm barely holding this. Just, I'm letting the water do the work, and I'm using the skill. So, we're going to keep on moving. Uh, we're kicking butt today. So, we're going to keep on moving. When we get done, I'll just show you the whole thing. Okay, guys, the best part of the day, the end of the day. We had fun, but it's, it's nice to get it done. All right, can, can you zoom in there and see? Uh, show. What we try to do is we float it, but we try not to leave a bunch of float lines. What we try to do is give it a sand finish, like say a color finish. You, you don't want to leave a bunch of float lines. Anyway, that's, that's what the whole job looks like. And how thick are we between 3 8 and 4 inches actually on some of these radiuses. Uh, he had said, don't worry about the radius. I thought, man, we're here. We're going to do it right. We, uh, a tip. What do you guys think out of all this was the most useful knowledge or the most useful stuff you can get out of it? I'll give you a tip, guys. <laughs> material knowledge, material knowledge can either make or break a job. Like so many guys call them, they, they email me on this. Uh, well, come out here, Jay. Uh, we'll show that wall there too. And all this drying out stuff, that's where it's wet and it's drying out, like a brick. A brick gets wet, when, dry, when it dries, then it becomes solid in appearance again. So this is fresh, it's, it's wet. But when it dries, it's gonna be uh, like the color of concrete. What's the difference between concrete and stucco? Stucco is Portland cement mixed with sand. Concrete is stucco or Portland cement mixed with rocks. That's the only difference. They both are Portland cement. Anyway, what we've done is, is uh, we got this radius cleaned up. It actually, it's not a, I mean, if I were to take a, a tool, it's not a perfect radius, but it, we do have four inches in some areas. And then it comes down here. And we fixed the top up. We feathered it all in. A piece of cake, another day at the office for us, and it's kind of like the gyms are closed, so here's our gym. We get paid to go work out, so you can't beat that. Anyway, my name is Kirk Jason on the camera. We thank you guys for watching, and as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one. Hi, everybody. We reached the end of another video, which means I get to do the fun part. I get to say thank you all for watching. If you like what we do, please like and subscribe so we can keep making content for you. And as always, if you're looking to purchase any of the tools or materials you see us use in these videos, you can usually find those at your local plastering yard. Or if you'd like to help support us in the process, you can buy them from our website, our Amazon affiliate links, and we'll make a little dough in the process there. More importantly, I get to introduce all you fine folks to the newest member of the Giordano Plastering Clan. This is my lovely baby Avery, and of course my beautiful partner Sarah. And as you can see, we've already picked out Avery's first trowel, so when they get a little older, they can come to the job site and learn from their dad and my dad, the plaster master, just like I got to. <laughs>
As usual, we thank all you folks for watching, and we will see you on the next one. Bye.